DMI is the meteorological authority for the entire Kingdom of Denmark, which means that we deliver weather forecasts also for Greenland. As part of this, we operate a vast observational infrastructure all around Greenland. But it's not just weather, it's also ice. We operate the ice service that provides ice charts for navigation, and we deliver operational oceanographic services. We're also the climate advisor to the Danish government, which means that we have an interest in all the processes that are governing the climate in the Arctic and the changes we see there. There are new opportunities arising, there are new threats arising, and all this requires new knowledge. And what we see is that the work increasingly requires us to work in a cross-disciplinary setting. So that's where we see things are going. Uh, the sea ice concentration is a fraction of sea ice covering the ocean. It is like a blanket. It's insulating the ocean. The sea ice is also reflecting sunlight. The, the product is made uh, from satellite data. So every day we, we receive a lot of satellite data from polar orbiting satellites. So we are uh, computing every day uh, from the satellite data, the sea ice concentration. We would like to bring the data and uh, the model closer together. Uh, we, Ultimately, we would like to do data assimilation where the data goes straight from the satellite into the model. And uh, uh, what we are trying right now is to bring them a bit closer together so that, that we are sure that they know what we mean when we talk about sea ice concentration. SMB calculations, surface mass balance calculations, are probably the single most important part of the ice sheet. If we want to understand how the ice sheet is changing at the moment, how it's likely to change in the future, we really need to understand the surface mass balance. And you can think of surface mass balance or surface mass budget like a, a bank account. Um, it snows onto the ice and that snow becomes compressed into ice, that's like paying money into your account. It melts, icebergs come out of it and that's like taking money out of your bank account. And the surface mass balance is about those surface processes, snowfall, snow melt. Um, so this is the thing that controls how the ice sheet is going to change in the future. We're part of a, a very big international consortium that's developed one of the best weather forecasting models in the world. And we use that data that comes out the bottom of that model, this precipitation, snowfall, the amount of melt, to calculate what the surface mass balance is on a daily basis. So we know that Greenland is increasing sea level rise by about one millimetre every year. And it doesn't sound like much, but we expect that contribution to increase in the future. We have a number of big international research projects here at DMI, uh, including the Copernicus Arctic Reanalysis, which we are uh, collaborating with our Nordic friends on. Um, and this will be a, a very high resolution, two and a half kilometre reanalysis of the Arctic, uh, focusing on Greenland. And we also plan to use this uh, to calculate the surface mass balance of the ice sheet in unprecedented detail and accuracy. Blue Action is a a new research and innovation project funded by the EU. It's about understanding the impact of a changing Arctic on weather and climate across the Northern Hemisphere. We have more than 40 partners from EU and non-EU, including US and Canada, and um, we work with the specific stakeholders uh, in the project as well that rely on, on accurate predictions of weather and climate. In the project we include a number of centers with the prediction systems uh, and we coordinate a lot of model experiments across these centers in order to um, pinpoint where to make improvements. To guide that we also um, assess available observations from the atmosphere, from the ocean, from the Atlantic and try to target our, our improvements in the model systems. Central improvements in the model systems we work with will be on the representation of leads in the Arctic. It will be on um, how to initialize our models and it will be on how to reduce uh, the known biases in the model system. We co-design a series of uh, services targeted very specific end users from science and industry and organizations. We also have a scientific outcome from the project that we try to embed in major programs like the Copernicus 3CS program, the IPCC process, the AR6, and in particular also the WMO initiative year of polar prediction is central to our research focus. The Arctic is warming really, really fast. In fact, it's one of the most one of the fastest warming areas on Earth. And this has an impact on the locals and their lifestyle. It has an impact on the ecosystem. So understanding these changes and the processes that govern them 
and mapping out what will happen in the future is really important. Sea level, partially due to melting of the green ice sheet, is something that will be felt globally. And then there are impacts on the ocean circulation, which in turn, together perhaps with changing sea ice conditions, can have an impact on European weather.